this presentation is about current ratio and quick ratio the most commonly used ratios for liquidity analysis this is a continuation of our discussion from financial statement analysis if you try to look at the methods we have the following methods time series cross-sectional ratio analysis and DuPont liquidity this is referred to as the company's ability to pay short-term liabilities. Though I prefer to use the second definition, which refers to the company's ability to pay near-term demands. Why, when we talk about short-term liabilities, this is just one component of near-term demands. Okay? There are other things that you have to pay in the near future, which is not found in your financial statements, okay? For example, if we're evaluating your liquidity using current, current ratio, here, you will see, later we're going to discuss this. Your current ratio has a formula of current, current assets divided by current liabilities. Okay. Now, assuming your current assets are 500,000, and let's say that your current liabilities are, or let's say it's 100,000 from our earlier discussions, okay. this will give us a ratio of 5 is to 1. This means that for every 1 peso of our current liabilities, we have 5 pesos to pay coming from our current assets but this one is only based on your existing current assets which you will use to pay for your current liabilities found in your FS this one is favorable but if you're going to consider let's say three months from now you're going to pay utilities amounting to let's say another hundred thousand I'm just making our mathematics easy. No? Uh, let's say you're going to pay salaries in the near future amounting to, let's say, uh, 200,000. 200, okay? And then there are other expenses like, aside from utilities and salaries, you have other operating expenses okay, amounting to, let's say, 100,000. And if you add that to your current liabilities, which is 100,000, that is now a total of 500,000. What about your other expenses? Those other expenses. Your 500,000 current asset may not be enough to pay for this. So there is now a question in your liquidity. That's why when we talk about liquidity, don't just focus on our ability to pay short-term liabilities. Instead, we focus on our ability to pay near-term demands. Okay? So what are the common ratios used to analyze the liquidity of a company? Okay. As mentioned earlier, you have your current ratio. That has the following formula. Current assets divided by current liabilities. Now what are the basic components of your current assets? You only have five. You have your cash, marketable securities, accounts receivable, inventories, and prepayments. These are the basic components of your current assets. If you try to remove your inventories and prepayments, okay, why do you have to remove them? You will be left with your cash, marketable securities, and AR, also known as your quick assets, or assets that are readily convertible into cash. Your inventories, once sold, Okay. may be sold for cash, no? but sometimes it can be sold on account. It will become part of your AR. So it's not readily convertible into cash. While your prepayments, they are intended to be consumed and not converted into cash. So that's the difference of current assets and quick assets. So now if your ability no, to pay your current liabilities or near-term demands is based on your current assets that's now your current ratio if you're evaluating your ability to pay your 
current liabilities or near-term demands based on your quick assets, we now use the quick ratio. Okay? So, for example, let's use the earlier example. If this is 500,000 and your current liability is 100,000, you will have a ratio of 5 is to 1. For every 1 peso of your liability, you have the ability to pay 5 pesos. Assuming that the total of your inventories and prepayments okay, is 450 pesos. Assuming that's 450. Okay? Because you have a lot of inventories and prepayments. So, what will now be your quick ratio? 500 minus 450. The total of your cash, marketable securities, and accounts receivable, you now have 50. Divided by 100,000. And that will give us a ratio of 0.5 is to 1. Without your inventories, you will not be able to pay for your current liabilities. Okay? So is it always like that? No. It doesn't follow. Most of the time, if this is favorable, sometimes this is also favorable. But if this quick ratio is favorable, definitely the current ratio will always be favorable. Your quick ratio is a more extensive measure of liquidity because it removes your inventories and prepayments. Okay. Now, there are some times when you don't need to compute for your quick ratio and a current ratio is enough. Okay. What are those instances? Okay. That is when your inventories are highly marketable. Okay, what do we mean by inventories that are highly marketable? For example, your inventories are gold, okay, or let's say silver. Inventories that are highly marketable, then your current ratio is already enough to evaluate your liquidity. Also, you have to be cautious about the effects of different transactions in your ratios. For example, Okay, what will be the effect of the collection of AR in your quick ratio or in your current ratio, sales of inventory on account, payment of accounts payable, and so on. Okay. And of course, you also have this thing called window dressing. How do I write window dressing? Let me write that down so that I will not forget. Okay, window. I'm just using the mouse. Uh -huh. oh, oh, come on. Window dressing. Okay, I'm almost there. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. Let's talk about the collection of accounts receivable. What do you think is the effect of the collection of accounts receivable in our current ratio if this is our ratio? Now take note, okay, when you collect accounts receivable, let's change the color of our pen. Okay, let's use yellow. Okay. When you collect your accounts receivable, it will be converted into cash. Though your accounts receivable will be lower, your cash will increase by the same amount. Therefore, the effect of the collection of accounts receivable in your current ratio is zero. No effect. What about in your quick ratio? Okay. Again, your accounts receivable and will be converted into cash. So there will be no effect in our quick ratio. What about the next one? Okay. Let's talk about the sales of inventory on account. Let's use a different color for this. Okay, let's use blue. Okay. What will the be what will be the effect? Okay, if you were able to sell your inventories, okay, let's say it could be on cash or on account. Okay. Again, if we are selling your inventories at cost, no, you might say and oh, there will be no effect because 
inventories and cash or inventories and accounts receivable are components of current assets. But take note, we sell inventories for a profit. Okay. So we are expecting a markup. Even if it's sold on account or even if it's sold on cash basis. So if you buy your inventories, let's say at 5 pesos each. Let's, let me write that down somewhere here. At 5 pesos each. And then sell them for 6 pesos. Okay, sell them for 6 pesos. You will now have a profit of 1 peso. Which means if the cost is 5, inventories will go down by 5. Accounts receivable or cash will increase by 6. Your current asset will increase. Same with your current ratio. But what about your quick ratio? Take note that in your quick ratio, okay, your inventory is not part of your quick assets. Therefore, okay, once your inventories are sold, whether they are sold on a markup, at cost, or at a loss, okay, your quick asset will increase. Okay? Even if it's only sold for 1 peso, your cash or accounts receivable will increase by 1 peso. Therefore, okay, your quick assets will increase. Okay? Going back to your quick ratio, what will happen if your inventories were sold okay, below the cost? For example, okay, this, 5 peso. No? An inventory costing 5 peso was sold for, let's say, 2 pesos. Now you have a loss of 3 pesos. This will go down by 5 pesos, but this will increase by 3 pesos. Okay? So your current ratio will go down. Another one will be your payment of accounts payable. Now this is common, especially if we are window dressing. Okay? And there are some books that states that, well, if you want to improve your current ratio, the best way is to pay accounts payable at the end of the year. Let's try to prove that. Going back, let's assume, let's assume that your current ratio is 5 is to 1. And let's assume that you paid half of your liabilities. This will result to 450 of your, of your total current assets because 50,000 was paid, right? So your cash went down by 50,000. Now your current liability will go to 50,000. What do you expect? You now have a ratio of 450 divided by 50. You now have 9 is to 1. So by simply paying your liabilities, you are able to improve your current ratio. But take note, that is only true. No? That strategy is only true if your current ratio is more than 1. Let's have another example. Let's assume that your current asset, let's say your current asset is 350, 350,000, while your current liability is 500. What do you get? 350 divided by 500, you will get 0.7. So you have 0.7 is to 1. So if you try to apply the same strategy, now let's say we paid 100,000, okay, your current asset will now become 250,000. Okay, I'm sure, let's pretend that I'm writing the most uh, beautiful 250,000. Okay, and you have your current liabilities because you paid 100,000, you now have 450. There you go. So what is now our revenue uh, ratio? Okay, I'm just grabbing my uh, calculator here. Okay. If you divide 250 by 400. 50, where is my calculator? Oh, here you go. 250 divided by 450. I'm getting 
55. So from 0.7, it went down to 0.55, is to 1. So your current ratio did not improve. Okay. So that's it. Thank you.